easy against Michigan State, but that one against Duke, first time Gonzaga has ever beaten a number one ranked team. Uh, I think that's going to go down as the most important win in Maui for Gonzaga. Of course, that interview from the Mark Few Show airs on Sunday nights here locally later in the week on route. And we did that interview with Coach Few on uh, Saturday morning, I believe, this week. Still had his puka shell. <laughs> He's still living oh, the Maui I was dream. Say, he was still in uh, Maui mode right there. Here's Ward near the horn. Shot away. Foul called on Jeremy Jones. Two seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, those fouls drive you crazy as a coach. You defend so well for 30, uh, 30 seconds or so, and then you give up a silly foul at the end. You're going to help Richard with that math. Yeah. 28 seconds. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the free throw. I, hey, I've got, a, I've got, I've, I've got a Thanksgiving uh, hangover as well. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> 12 8. Here's Hachimura. Rui taken away. Jarius Cook with anticipation, the run out, but he missed the shot thanks to number 15, Brandon Clark. Well, I was getting back on defense. I don't think Jarius Cook got the memo <laughs> in the North Dakota State <laughs> scouting report. Don't say. challenge Brandon Clark oh, at the rim. Hey, man, give the kid props, though, for trying. <laughs> Clark leads the NCAA in block shots with 24 coming into tonight. Already adding to that total. He has been such a difference maker on both ends of the floor, but defensively, as dynamic a defender as you'll find in the country. Well, he can guard pick and rolls. In this switch, he can guard Ooh. on the low block. How about that move to the baseline? Hachimura, two more. The ability now to finish with the left hand is something that he is starting to show. But back to Clark. I mean, you talk about how good he is right now. We're not even a fourth of the way through the season, and he's starting to get to the numbers where you're thinking, He's not just going to break Austin Day's single season block record. He's going to smash it. Yeah, Clark already two blocks in this game. 16 on the shot clock for North Dakota State. Clark with 26 blocks now in the season. Austin Day had 70 yeah. in a season. I mean, Clark's on pace for now, Richard, we can test your math again. Probably about 120. <laughs> yeah, let me break out my, my Excel, guys. So, just like, the math is a lot. That's the total. <laughs> Five on the shot clock. Here's Dang Goo, and he can shoot the three. Three of six on the season. Now four of seven. Oh, I'm sorry, Cameron Hunter. My mistake. Goo is 23. That was 22. Either way, it's a three. 14 to 11. Hachimura's jump shot is good. 16 to 11. But mid pick and roll where Rui's the guy setting the screen and because he stays in the middle of the floor it's so hard for help to right. get back because you're spacing the floor with the shooter well and he can get around you with the dribble drive so as, the, as a defender you've got to pick your poison and you just see the nice move inside by Dang kind of returning the favorite there on Petrusive a little up and under that was a spectacular move footwork Kevin McHale-ish Hachimura great catch Boy, you ought to get three points for that. Maybe a half point. Something. 11.59 to play. First half, Gonzaga with a three-point lead on North Dakota State. with a drive on Petrosev in the finish. Nice. Boy, he's got nice some moves. explosions. He's been decisive on all his catches. Getting right to the rim. Norvell left open. Missed the three. Hachimura the rebound. Another chance. Perkins faked three. Threw it to Rui. Went for the flush, and he's fouled by number 22, Cameron Hunter. This is an area for Hachimura where he's gotten so much better is getting to the line. 
It was four more free throws this year per game. And you just see, I mean, part of that is is a function of him getting more touches offensively. But really, you look at the, his ability to post up, take defenders off the drive, and it's just going up so much stronger than it did last year. Uh, less concerned with avoiding contact as a result, he get, he's getting himself to the line. Yeah, a lot of it is him initiating the contact and then absorbing it before the foul comes. And that last foul was called on Dane Gu. That's his first. Just the second foul on North Dakota State. Gonzaga with one team foul. A lineup for Gonzaga that can almost switch one through five. Maybe not with Petrosev every time. Is wow. Gu takes him off the bounce again, but. This is a lineup that you're really going to start to see a lot. Yeah, it shoots 66 percent inside the paint. Uh, as Petrusev gets fouled, is going to get a couple free throws. But dang, he just—he's so good around the rim. And right here, just quick move. He's been decisive all night. Takes the larger defender off the dribble, high finish off the glass. Six quick points off the bench. And the Bison need this tonight. They need guys off their bench to help. Uh, with the offensive line, particularly inside the three-point line. Petrosev long on that first attempt. Another guy who played well in Maui. For a young player, Dan, great minutes. He's taking advantage of the injury to Tilly. 11 points in the championship game against Duke. He's a guy that's played in big games on right. the international scene. FIBA U18s for his home country of Serbia had 29-8, and eight, but you're right. You know, with Tilly out, it's going to give him a chance to get a lot of experience, which Gonzaga's, quite frankly, going to need down the stretch of the season. And Edie almost drug a foot. And, and this that's is off of Jones over there on the sideline. Yeah, second possession now. Gonzaga's gone to a little 1-2-1-1, one, one, three-quarter court trap. And that's something that, with Rui at the top, can create a lot of problems. It's a lot of numbers, Dan. <laughs> Oh, well, Richard's good with math. I thought I'd throw those out there. Did that equal Very five players? <laughs> Look at Clark just hounding the ball for GU. Here's Cook with six on the shot clock over Hachimura and buries it. And the Bison have come to play tonight shooting 54% from the field. And really, outside of a few possessions, have not gotten sped up, have run what they wanted to run, getting good looks and knocking them down. Norvell Jr., there's the answer. That's where it's so hard to guard Gonzaga when they get into that continuity pick and roll. If you guard the roller and tag, which they did, it leaves an open shooter in Norvell with his feet set. Jordan Horn, number 33 with it. Bison have made their last five field goals. Jump shot. Off by Hunter. Gonzaga throws it away, North Dakota State basketball. Third turnover for GU this half. They've done a good job of taking care of the ball early in the season until the opening game in Maui against Illinois. 22 of those turnovers that night, seven by Josh Perkins. Other than that, he has been extremely solid with the ball this season. I'll take my point guard having 50 assists and 15 turnovers. In hey, six I games. agree. I mean, it's been remarkable how good he's been with the ball. I mean, that Illinois game, you know, Gonzaga needed to do so much with the ball against constant pressure. I know he had some silly turnovers. Jones with a deflection, the run out. Shahid runs it down for North Dakota State. Back come the Bison. Jones tried to get in front of him, and the offensive foul called on Vinny Shahid. And it was Norvell who stood his ground and took the shot. The second Shahid tracked that ball down in the backcourt, he had his eyes on the rim. Zach Norvell read it, got there early, and just stood his ground waiting to take the contact. Mm, not sure about that one. <laughs> Tough call. He was there. He was. He was there. And moving, but he was moving there. there. <laughs> moving as he got there, yeah. Hey. It's starting to fall down. Charges the in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> Hey, shooter's got to sell it on the defensive end. Clark to spin. Wow. Hangs and hits. Yeah, both Hatchamore and Clark are so effective at that high post area. And Clark now this year with the improved jump shot uh, has a little bit of the same dynamic of Hatchamore where you just don't know what to do defensively 
in that high post area. And a lot of times when you're guarding a guy that explosive and quick, if you gap them and give them space, it gives them more right. of a head start, and it's even harder to guard. Five on the shot clock. Bruiser driving. Kicked it out. They don't get it off in time. There's no way. There's no way they're going to check that, right? They're, they have to check that. They have the ability to check it, but That Shahid, wasn't out of his hand in time. Shahid has been a spark plug for them tonight. Yeah, Vinny, that'll be his second make if they count it. But I don't think they will. With 8.20 to play here in the first half. Let's take a look. I don't know. That's red right now. It's red. It's still in his hand. Red. Hand. You're correct. Fine. You go by the red. No pass. No bucket. Vinny's like, look at it again. <laughs> Come on, guys. I don't make a lot of these. <laughs> well, no, it's not his game, right? Yeah. He's, he, you've seen him attack the rim. That's what he does. And anything he makes from behind the arc is just gravy for the Bison. He's already knocked down one. but Three or four overall for Shahid. Perkins, little stutter, shot good. A little stutter is right. Little shimmy off the bounce to create a little hesitancy in the defender. Rise up over the top. Samuelson. He's a good shooter, but look who's guarding him. <laughs> and now Clark's on him. Clark takes it away, and then he's fouled by Jared Samuelson. Welcome back to Spokane. Zags up by seven. Josh Perkins already with five more assists. One of the best point guards in the country, Dan. And he has been distributing extremely well to start the season. And he's making the game simple on himself. Side pick and roll. Help side defender tags Marie Hachimura. Easy play getting it to the shooter in Kispert. Mid pick and roll. Help is nowhere to be found. Throw the back to the screener in Hachimura. Give him an open look. And then again. The help side defender tags the roller and another shooter in Norvell. Easy decisions, simple decisions lead to easy buckets for Gonzaga. Josh Perkins has grown tremendously in that this year, in my opinion, making the simple and easy play. Three straight turnovers for the Bison as Clark dumps one easy and it's 28-19. That, that high pick and roll is just devastating for Gonzaga. It's a 10-0 Gonzaga run now, and they've opened up this nine-point lead. Ten on the shot clock for Vinny Shahid. Here's Ward. Jump hook no good. Clark clears it. Kispert. Clark from 17. That's a good looking stroke right there. Off season of work with Brian Michelson. That jump shot did not look like that at San Jose State. Tom, you can't guard Hachimura and Clark if they're knocking down that mid range jump shot that way. They're just too explosive uh, putting the ball on the floor. I mean, defensively, you just don't know what to do. Clark hasn't missed. He's 5 of 5, 10 points. And tennis on the shot clock again, and that's well short from nope. Edie. Here's Perkins. Thought about it, and those, hesitated, yeah. and then hit it. And look, those are the shots you can't have if you're the Bison. You know, a contested three, 
You still have time on the shot clock. Trust your offense. Zach is just too good off of these mistakes, whether they be bad shots, whether they be off turnovers. This is a questionable shot. Get the defensive rebound. Any guy, anybody who gets the rebound can bring it up. And just a simple play, a little ball fake uh, from Perkins. Sets himself, takes his time, and he's just too good a shooter uh, to miss those all that often. Well, Samuelson gets put in such a bind. Right. Do you, you got Kisper on one side? <laughs> exactly. And, do you bluff and stay home to Kisper, or do you fully rotate and get out to Perkins? Either way, you're giving up an open look to a good shooter. Gonzaga on a 15-0 run right now. North Dakota State has hit their last two shots. And they had three turnovers in a row prior to that. They need something here. Here's Ward driving right at Clark and Jones. And the foul called on Brandon Clark, I believe. It is. That was a wall that he ran into. Rule of verticality. He looked like he did go straight up. I believe the call was on Jones. We'll have to check that and see if that were the case. Foul was on Clark, his first. And here's your Arby's fan tribute answer. Who was the last leading scorer for Gonzaga when they faced North Dakota State in the first round of the tournament in 15? It was Kyle Wilcher. Who scored 23 points in an 86-76 win. Whoever won needs to send Richard Fox a care package. That's right. Foreshadowing that answer. Send me some Arby's. Guys, you were you talking about meets? Brandon Clark earlier, and we see his defense, of course, a foul call there, but he's hit 24 of his last 28 he's field goals. 19 of 23 in Mallory. And, 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 and it's not all dunks, <laughs> no. right? I mean, he, it's off the drive. He knocked down a couple threes in Maui. You see the you know, 15, 16-foot jump shot here tonight. Uh, he's a lot more skilled than I think people realize coming into this season. Greg Foster, number four on the floor for the first time for GU. Greg Foster, Jr., the freshman. And that was a question that we had. Who was going to pick up some of those minutes with Crandall out? Was it going to be Foster or Ayayi? Dang Goo back on the floor for the Bison. Did a lot of good things when he was in there the last time. Here's Hunter. Eight on the shot clock. Here's a deep three coming from Horn. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be Gonzaga ball. Nothing coming easy right now for North Dakota. Even their shots, they're oftentimes deep in the shot clock. Yeah, and everything, you know, when they do try to penetrate, you know, they're driving into traffic, into a wall. Gonzaga's done a nice job here this uh, last three or four minutes of really closing out aggressively uh, and forcing the Bison to think about those three-point shots. Here's Rui going at Goo. Clark. <laughs> I mean, now 25 how do you, of his last 29. How do you keep him off the offensive glass? As quick as he is, an instinct for the ball, and the explosiveness to get up and catch it above the rim. I mean, you almost have to look. I mean, think about you, know, you, you think about a, a, a high-level shooter, a box and one. I mean, almost defensively, whoever's guarding Clark has to just know, I'm not helping on these drives. I've got to stay attached to him. Yeah, or on the block out, you just face guard right. him and block him out. Let somebody not else even go turn get the ball. and worry about yourself getting it. I mean, that's what it's becoming. Nearly three offensive rebounds a game. 419 to play first down. Tough job trying to get it in over Rui Hachimura. And Gonzaga worked on this today at, at shoot around. We have got to be better at taking away opportunities on baseline out of bounds. Make them play four on five. Throw it out and set our defense. There's a deep three again. Oh. Great shot there from Cameron Hunter. Their first field goal since the clock had 10-19 on it. That's a <laughs> good defense from Hachimura. Just a big time shot from Hunter there in the corner. Tip your cap to that one. Four minutes to play, first half. Norvell Jr., deep three. He just makes scoring look easy. I know he's only got six points tonight, but 
some guys, you can just look at them and how they move on the floor. They, he's just a born scorer. What I loved in that game against Arizona is that he was obviously struggling, and then an opportunity came on a run out off the defense, right. dunk it at the other end, and all of a sudden he's in he's in rhythm. Norvell, Hachimura, and the slam at the other end. Rui showed some quicks there. He saw an open lane, filling it, getting it rewarded by Norvell with the dunk. And now the fans of the kennel are into the game again. Jags lead is at 20. Hunter again. That three is off. Rebound by Clark, but a foul called against Rui Hachimura. We'll take a timeout. 3.05 to play here in the first half. Gonzaga's opened up the door. They lead it by 20. The state. But Clark may play under the bucket, but man, he is quick on this floor. Jump hook coming and off from Gruiser. Norvell, the long rebound. And Clark right away posts up. Hachimura drives. Norvell. <laughs> he just needs one to go yeah, in. Exactly right. Yeah, you know, I, I gotta say, watching the Duke game, you just watching Norvell, he's got a lot of Pargo in him in that, you know, Jeremy Pargo you know, would go into a game, it didn't matter what kind of hype the other guy got. He thought he was better. He believed it. He believed he was better. Is that and Norvell, Chicago mentality? Tell yeah, me Norvell was is. looking at you know Reddish and, and all those guys at Duke and thinking to himself, I'm better than all these yes. guys. And he played that way. He's got this moxie about him. You don't see very often. Hunter driving, but Clark protects the rim. Here's Norvell in transition. And the lay-in at the other end. shooting 72 percent in the field here in the first half. Poked away Kispert. He runs it down. Corey and the two-handed hammer. <laughs> Zags up by 27. It just happened so quickly. Well, they were down 19-18 around the 10-minute mark. I know you're good at math, Richard. What is that run? What's, what's oh. <laughs> Clark, another block. This one on the perimeter. Foster, the three. Rebounded by Hunter. <laughs> Why not, Vinny? Vinny Shahid from deep, his second make. He does not lack confidence, that's for sure. He's into double figures now with 10, and Kispert, following the dunk, hits the three, five quick ones. Corey now with eight. Three zags already into double figures with Perkins with eight, Kispert with eight. Eight on the shot clock, taken away by Rui. Another run out, and Hunter doing a great job for North Dakota State to get back and deny that dunk at this end. And Rui is up and fine for GU. He's up and fine, but I'm sure the officials are going to take a look and see if there's any reason to deem it a flagrant That's a one. That's a clean play. He went for the ball, right? He did go for the ball. I'm not saying anything, but the officials have to do their job because it looked like an awkward fall and see if it was a flagrant one. Well, they'll take a timeout here and look at it with 10.8 seconds to play first half. Gonzaga now leading at 52-25. That's a clean play. He got all kinds of ball, but as he comes through, gets uh, the left arm of Hachimura. That's two shots. I would agree. And they just made the determination that it's just a common foul. So Rui will shoot free throws with 10 points. He's two of four in this game from the line. So 
Clark, Hachimura, Norvell already in the double figures with Perkins and Kispert looming. Hey, it, it, this is one of those odd games where for the first five, seven minutes you're thinking, well, this could be close. And then all of a sudden, just like that, hey, Gonzaga's up by 27. 1918, the Bison are shooting 55% from the field. <laughs> you look down now, they're shooting 40% from the field. You know, it's and dropping. And I think so much attention is paid to Gonzaga's offense. What is going to be the difference for them this year is how good they are defensively. And we've seen that now during this stretch. It's how they knocks down the second. Uh, they're able to press. They can do a variety of things in the half court, whether it's zone, switching everything. Um, and it's that versatility that makes it really hard. Here's Hunter, five on the clock. Shot away, short, loose ball. Ayayi grabbed the ball for Giu, but his feet were on that end line. So with 1.7 seconds to play, first half, the Bison with another chance. Let me quickly ask you guys this. Brandon Clark is Gonzaga. Here's a shot at the horn that won't go. Has Gonzaga had a better rim protector, a true rim protector in all eight? 53-25, our score. We're back with halftime from the McCarthy Athletic Center in a moment. It'll be Kispert inbounding right in front of us. Hachimura and Norvell. Brandon Clark on the floor along with Mr. Josh Perkins. Not that, gentlemen, not that there isn't always a lot of pressure on Josh Perkins, but with the injury to Gino as Kispert lines up to three, that's off. But there's even more pressure now on Josh, right, to keep the ship moving forward. Yeah, look, he played 35 minutes a game in Maui. You know, that, that's with uh, yeah, Gino that's playing lot. 12 minutes a game. So you think about these big games coming up for GU, uh, a lot's going to be asked to Josh. He's the primary ball handler. Uh, facilitators Clark gets another block. <laughs> Wow, number He's five. Volleyball. Here's Norvell from the corner. Kind of surprised he missed that, frankly. Dan, how many minutes did you play a game your senior year here? Remember? Probably been about, about the same, or 35 right? or so. But it's one of those things where, you know, he has simplified the game, so now he's not trying to make a play every time he touches it. He makes the correct play way more times than not. And Norvell. that helps you conserve energy. Assist to Perkins. Yeah. I think a takeaway I had from the Duke game anyway was as talented as Duke is, that's a young team. You're relying basically on four freshmen to make decisions down the stretch. The game is still a bit quick at times. You know, you look at a guy like Perkins, this is his fifth year, man. The game is slow. At Shimura, you see the same thing. Norvell, the more experience you have, uh, the slower the game becomes. And when you've got a high basketball, basketball IQ, it's uh, as Clark just continues to... to <laughs> Just run make, to the rim and make, just somebody make, throw it to make him. ridiculous plays. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. he caught and twisted all in the air all at once. Clark leading Gonzaga now with 16. Samuelson, here's Ward, lay in. Chimura high low, Clark the catch. But a foul before the shot, and this will go against Vinny Shahid. And look at that mismatch, 5'11 against 6'8. There's nothing Shahid could do to get the switch. Clark sealed him nicely, but the play before, Clark doing what he is doing an unbelievable job of tonight, and that's running hard and running directly to the rim. Kispert, the nice delivery where only Clark can catch and finish. Corey with his second assist along with two rebounds and eight points. Guys, let me ask you this question. Gonzaga being ranked number one this early in the country or in the season, and obviously the, the expectations on this program now. Here's Hachimura with the finish. And I don't think it's going to be an issue over the next four or five games with that schedule really ramping up. But after that, keeping the motivation, how difficult is that going to be? And how much of that will fall on the shoulders of Josh Perkins being that fifth-year senior? Well, he went through it that year when Gonzaga was undefeated as who has another nice low block finish. But he went through it the year where they were undefeated until they lost the last home game against BYU. So he understands the challenge of continuing to stay focused throughout WCC play. 
You know, it'll be interesting to see, though, as oh, he gets fouled on the emphatic dump, dunk attempt. But it'll be interesting to see how some of the national media looks at Gonzaga once they get into, you know, the dog days of league play where, oh, they're not playing, you know, this high-level schedule. It is what it is. You play the schedule that's in front of you, and you have to win what's placed in front of you. You know, to that one voter that voted to Gonzaga is number four. Yeah, I would like to know what was possibly going through their mind yeah. when they filled out what did their they like? fight. <laughs> what did they not prove when they beat Duke? Yeah, uh, without Killian Tilly. Yes. <laughs> Rui, and the, the thing that I love most about Rui over in Maui was his desire, his ability to compete at a high level at both ends of the floor over a three-game stretch. Yeah, I was impressed by that. He played with a passion. I don't think we've seen him play with in three years. There's a chance for three now for Jarius Cook. Cook, a freshman out of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. It's kind of a broken play here. Good initial defense from Kispert. Clark doesn't see. Bell missed the block out on that way. We can't expect Clark to pick up every <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Maybe he's Superman. Have you seen him? Yeah. Yeah. Norvell. He'll shoot free throws. That's what he does. Such a nice job of does Zach Norvell is patient coming off the pick and roll reading it and then creating right. contact to get himself to the free throw line if he doesn't have anything easy well both he and Rui have improved their free throw rate yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know the much more assertive attack in the rim and you know particularly for a guy like Norvell in my opinion he's, he'll have stretches where he's struggling with his jump shot and we, you mentioned it earlier in the first half Greg against Arizona I believe really struggled in the first half, got the dunk, yeah. and it just opened Changed things everything. up. And I think for him, sometimes just getting to the line does the same thing. He doesn't need to see the ball go through the hoop a whole lot before uh, that confidence comes back. Word driving. They went right at Clark. They continue to try to do that. That's three on Brandon Clark. Well, that was another miscue by Gonzaga's perimeter defenders is there's a mid ball screen coming up. Clark is guarding the guy guarding the ball screen. Guard must make him use it because that's where Clark is waiting. He's waiting to guard the ball handler and shore it up as he comes off. Ward rejects the screen, goes away from it, putting Clark in foul pressure. Here you see Kispert jumps up too soon. Instead of making him use the screen, right. he now puts Clark in a disadvantage where Clark's having to play catch up and gets the foul. Tyson Ward, a junior out of Tampa, Florida. How do you go from Florida to <laughs> North Dakota where it's completely different climate? Maybe he got tired of the heat. I know I would. Hachimura blocked by Dangu. Dangu was put together a night. Yeah, but tonight. why isn't he on the floor the whole game? Like, every time he's in there, he does something. And well, he, you can tell athletically he can play with Gonzaga. Well, I mean, North Dakota State's DNA, at least right now, this early in the year, is a three-point shot. That's not something Dig uh, does it all that effectively. Is the Bison get to the line again. Tough finish by Shahid over Hachimura. And right now for Gonzaga, the dribble drive has killed them. Uh, the Bison will get to the rim here pretty regularly. Number two on Hachimura. Well, somebody just tweeted at me who's listening to the game. Jesse Newell is the one voter who voted Gonzaga number four. Guess where he's from? Kansas. Oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It's a Shahid. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, but flip it around if you were a voter, and you would have voted Gonzaga. All right? Vote with my heart sometimes, too, right? Yeah. Kispert. with the rebound. Lost it. Tipped by Perkins. Grabbed by Jeremy Jones. Perkins with a great move at midcourt. Left hand. He'll shoot free throws. 
And timeout on the floor. 15-41 to play in the game between. Zags on their way to getting to 7-0 on the season as Perkins drops in point number nine. And guys, Josh Perkins, Dan, you talked a little bit about it. I mean, climbing these career numbers list, assists, three-point field goals, and steals. He's one of the best players the program's ever had. Well, and a lot of that is based upon the fact that Coach Few values winning. He's going to put guys on the floor that put him in a best position to win games. Josh has done that for four years now. Look, he's going to be more than likely uh, the all-time leading, uh, all-time wins leader in NCAA history as a point guard. That tells you just about everything you need to know about him as a player. Well, out of control is Jordan Horn. Missed the shot. Back comes GU. But when you look at it, I mean, he's climbing the career list in assists. He's uh, He needs two more to tie Cargo for fifth all-time. He's got 534 now. He's got 200 and Eight three-point field goals. Needs two more. Well, he'll be tied for eighth all-time. And then the steal numbers would rank him tenth uh, with Jeff Goss, the great Jeff Goss. Uh, Jeff Goss sitting there in Boise watching this game on television. He's not going to like being passed. <laughs> well, but we called him the great Jeff Goss. You did, not me. Yeah, but I did. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> Sorry, I'll own Jeff. that. <laughs> Jeff's looking at his kids right now. I said, I told you. <laughs> I told you that I was told, great. I was somebody. I was somebody. <laughs> Jeremy Jones. He was part of that group that went to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 1995. Really kind of got this thing started. A it lot took of a ways. couple more years before they got back. And then Gonzaga became what everybody knows of Gonzaga now. But that 95 team deserves a ton of credit. Jeff Brown, the big brown cat. Jeremy Jones at the line. Gentlemen, we can't say enough about Jeremy Jones at the Maui Classic. I just, you talk about waiting all this time for his opportunity, and he finally gets it, and he wins the game for him against I, Illinois. It, it says a lot about a person. It does. In my opinion. I agree. Who has to continue to wait and has all kinds of frustrations. You know he had to be frustrated at times, but he stayed ready. And in a huge moment against Arizona is essentially the difference for GU. Norvell just taken away from Jarius Cook. Well, his nickname Snacks. He took that like he was a kid wanting his own snacks there. Wanted that ball. But, you know, Jeremy didn't know if he'd ever really get a shot here. Right. You know, and then, of course, the injury to Killian Tilly. And, uh, and Jeremy has suffered through that sort of thing his, himself throughout his career. But I interviewed him before the season started, and he said he had absolutely no grits. If he had to do it all over again, he would have come to this basketball program and played. It's taken him to some great arenas, some great games, the NCAA tournament, Final Four. I mean, he's had a world-class experience here at Gonzaga, even though maybe the minutes don't reflect it. But they're going to this year. But it's being a part of something bigger than yourself and being a part of this Gonzaga's winning culture that guys want to be a part of. Something special. Here's Tyson Ward. Shot for three, and Jones with a rebound. And I also think it reflects this program, right, where all of these players come here knowing that they're going to have to sacrifice self in many ways as Jones and I will go to the free throw line. But you have to sacrifice self to fit into this basketball program. Look, that's going to have to happen given how talented all these guys are, you know, whether they be in Europe or in high school. Uh, you, you have to adapt to a different role. And, more often than not, you've got to grow into what you become. You know, you think about Norvell, he redshirted a year. Right. Uh, Hachimura didn't come right away. You, know, you go down the list, it takes a while to be a good player at a great program. Uh, and a guy like Jones embodies that, in my opinion. And there's a number of guys on this roster that have had to kind of wait their turn, have had to grow into the role that they now have. Uh, and I think if you asked any one of them, they'd tell you it was worth the wait. Yeah. And then you had to go through the same sort of thing with your transfer from Washington, sitting out a year, waiting for your turn, and then you got it and grabbed it and went with it. I think a lot of what that redshirt year does is it, it makes you battle test it. I mean, you, you, you take that practice, make it a game for a year straight, but you don't get to reap the rewards of playing in the games and, and having the great trips. Uh, but when you look at Gonzaga's makeup of the roster, they're starting to get better and better rated recruits. 
and when you add that culture of work and buying in, it's going to continue to plateau the, the program into even more heights. And the foul call here with 13.28 to play, and it's the old adage, when your best players are your hardest working players, you got a real chance. Yeah, Gonzaga's, for the most part, has had that. Yeah. You look back to, you know, the Pangos era. He was a guy who was always in the gym. Uh, Morrison and Ravio were always in the gym. You know, Gonzaga looks for those guys when they recruit. Do they love the game? <laughs> Jones with a spike at the net. <laughs> Foul called prior to that. Petrasev called on the foul. There's been some confusion on how to pronounce Big Phil's name. I think we finally got it figured out. I don't know, it's man. I'm Petrasev. still confused. It's changed three times. <laughs> it has. And here's the new recruits. And boy, I tell you what, there's a coaching staff here at Gonzaga that's very excited, too, about these five guys coming next year. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment. But it, it, just when you think this thing hits a ceiling talent wise or recruiting wise, right? you see a class like that, including Anton Watson that's coming uh, from Spokane here next year. It's exciting time again in Zagville. And I don't see it slowing down. No, not at all. Two kids from the state of Washington. Anton Watson and Brocker Bay, both very good players. And then a couple Europeans. And then Drew Timmy from Texas, a 6'10 interior player. Bang! Gonzaga's high on. And Kispert now to double figures with 11. Zag number five to get there. Here's Foster, three on two. Norvell. Kispert corner three. Bang! Kispert three more. Now with 14. But you see what the kind of shooter he is when he gets his feet set. Back to back possessions. Great balance. Good lift. Finds the bottom of the net both times. Jones there defensively. Petrasev earns the rebound. There really are no weaknesses at any position. Kispert, the heat check from the corner again. What did you give up at half by half? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I we'll go back. I was, I was not the greatest he was defender. <laughs> I was a good team defender, put it that way. Okay. He was, he was he an effort. All right. Just, just set I know story. Coach Few values putting your team in a position to win, and I did that on the offensive end, not necessarily the defensive end. <laughs> That's a really good way of putting it. I got to remember that. That's really good. And Adam Morrison is now doing the radio for GU. He would always say, hey, did I score one more than the guy that I was guarding tonight? Then I did my job. There's a turnover. And another, speaking of Mo. Hey, look, Paramount off to an incredible start at 7 0. Best in school history and USF, best since 81 82. There's 13 and 0 between Loyola, Marymount, and San Francisco. What do we read into that? Well, I read into that Mike Dunlop finally has the type of players that he wants in his system. And USF's backcourt, Frankie Ferrari and Jordan Martino, their experience is going to help win games this year. LMU with wins against UNLV and Georgetown, so not a soft cupcake schedule that they're unbeaten in. Joel Ayayi, number 11 on the floor for GU. Hachimura tees up the three. And that right there is a big three, in my opinion, for Rui Hachimura. The Will fact we remember that he could get one? a trail three. I haven't seen a trail three from him yet this season, okay. but he caught it in rhythm, stepped into it. That one looked good. Five or ten on the year. That's all he needs to do is because it's still a small sample size. Oh, oh, smokes. How many times are we going to see that? I believe that's the second tonight, Greg. Hey, tonight. I've seen it a few other times already. Here's the trail three that well, it's a confidence. Dan just called Dan. one of the biggest yeah. shots in Rui's career. Oh, my God. <laughs> just the confidence with which he just flowed into I it. Understand. Great footwork. Um, Shot it without any hesitation. I'm being funny. Thank you. Bison now 0 for their last 13 shots. 
I like this kid's game. Foul called. Uh, Philip Petrusev. Do South Dakota State Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Played on the Ugandan national team last summer. Got some great experience. You can only imagine he's going to be a handful in the Summit League. He's got the ball now over Hachimura Ayi. Clears the rebound. High low. Clark just caught the ball and with a little bounce spun in the air and laid it That's in. That's at least the second time though Shahid is switched on to Clark and Clark does the correct thing. Do everything he can to seal up the lane. Catch it high, keep it high and finish. Dangu dribbled the ball in the end line. Turnover 9.50 to play. Foster and Jones back into the game for Gonzaga as Clark and Perkins go out. Wonder, you know, when you're a coaching staff and you see Killian Tilly get hurt, and then uh, Gino Crandall get gets hurt, like you start to get a little snake bit and worried every time you put these guys out on the floor that somebody could get dinged. I don't think you do. You, you got so many other things going on. I think what you want to take advantage of in games like this is can you get a guy like Perkins some rest, touching more the guys who you really you know, had to lean on in Maui because <laughs> coming. You know, next week, you're, yeah. you're, 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 later this week, rather, you're no scheduled. Rest. There's yeah. no rest. You've got to take every opportunity you can to get these guys some rest uh, on game night, and I think you'll see that. I can't imagine how you want to be on the game much longer. Ay, ay, But see, I, I don't buy that. I mean, these guys are 18, 19, 20 years old. I mean, they should be able to play 30, 35 minutes a game if they're the true rotation guys. Okay. Here's Cook. Jump stop. Missed the shot. Grab by Hachimura. Rui. Lob. Catch by Petrosev. Has it taken away. Tough catch. It was. Petrosev brought it down. And, and the ball stripped. Ooh. A lot of contact. No call. Shahid threw a shoulder into Ayayi. No call. Count the bucket. Ball. He's got the switch and Samuelson on him in low. Ward. That shot long by Dangu. Got his own miss. Laid it in. Dangu now with 10 points. He really has been one of the few bright spots for the Bison. He's knocked down one three, but his work around the rim has been impressive. You've, you've said it, Greg. In the Summit League, he's going to be a handful. Yeah. I mean, he's all a six seven, six eight. Good athlete, strong, bouncy, long. Seven fifty now in yeah, this program's history. Right. Probably is Perkins though. There's Josh and Brandon Clark. Jeremy Jones at the free throw line. Rebounded by Jared Samuelson out of Gretna, Nebraska. Oh, Nelly. I thought Keith Jackson was in Pullman. It was, but he, I, I associate hey, Keith Jackson football? with Nebraska, Oklahoma. Okay. Oh, and oh, Nelly. Gotcha. Here's Foster. Petra said. Such a soft stroke for a big guy. Richard and I Stretch were talking five. about that off air. I, I mean, you hate to play the comparison game, you know, but he has got such a soft stroke for a big man behind that three-point line. Is he farther ahead of Kelly Olenek when he was a freshman? Uh, I would say yes. yes. Right? He has to be. Well, Kelly was still growing into his body because he grew – what, close to eight uh, inches his last two years or so of high school. Yeah, I'd say Kelly was a 
probably a touch more skilled with the ball, putting it on the floor, but you know, physically and right here on the low block. That's good, Phil. Yeah, that's just good. Phil, Phil, good. Yeah, I mean, that, those are that's a mature move in the post. Doesn't get sped up. You know, his original move gets you know, good initial defense goes right to his counter. And uh, hopefully we can get to that graphic that we showed you a little bit earlier about the other players that will be joining Philip on this roster next year. Some good bigs coming. Impressive guys. Yeah, I mean, you, clearly the staff is preparing for uh, some departures on, on along the front line as we take a look here. Yeah. And, you know, Timmy Watson, uh, both those kids, you, you expect to play a ton. Zakharov they love as well. Six they 10. do. He's young. You know, he's kind of in the same mold as Ayaye where he's coming in. Basically, a year young. He may be a kid that could use a redshirt year just physically, but from a talent perspective, they love what he brings. He plays at a high level high school, Mount Verde Academy in Florida, which is where Patricia. Timmy with a great motor, physical guy, great skill yeah, true, set, and an IQ of the yeah, game. Yeah, a true low block player. And Watson, a kid who has grown physically, you know, a guy who. You know, Think of Jones, you know, maybe a bit more talented, but a guy you can put comfortably at the three or the four, going to offer some versatility. But you know, this is going to be a very, very young Gonzaga program next year. Matt Lang, number 10 on the floor for GU right now, a freshman out of Portland, Oregon. Jesuit high school. Seth, what a catch. And the finish Gonzaga's, with the reverse. Big Phil. Always had... A player, it seems, from Jesuit. Brian Michelson, Kyle Wilcher, Connor Griffin, and now Matt Lang. Mike Hart? Is that Mike Hart. Yeah. Sorry, Connor Griffin was Lake Oswego. Marshall Cho, the coach at Lake Oswego, if you're watching, I apologize. Jack Beach, number two on the floor as well. Petrasev. Trying to keep it alive. Lang pokes it out. Beach runs it down. Lang throws it away. Here's Hunter on the run out. Oh, and he jams it at the other end. I didn't think that he had that in him at 6'3", 185. But Cameron throws it down. Dang goo on the block. Zag ball with 19 seconds on the shot clock. 5.13 to play. Gentlemen, they fire up the bus next now and they head for Creighton. On their home floor. Omaha is always a difficult place to play. It's a big arena. It'll be full. Right. A little bit of a down year for Coach McDermott's group, but they'll be ready to play. And then it doesn't get any easier. UW here at home. And then at against Tennessee and Phoenix. And then the showdown in North Carolina. Well, look, That's going to be a heck of a thing for Gonzaga. The screen game is going to be the screen game is be the first true road game. Yeah. In an incredibly <laughs> hostile environment. I, I mean, I, I don't care how good Creighton is. When you're going to fill the building and number one is coming to your home floor, right. trust me, Creighton's going to play well. He'll be in ready that to game. play. Ayayi. I wonder if Creighton's ever had the number one ranked team in the country on their home floor. I'm sure they have at some point. You know, I don't have my I don't Creighton. Think, has uh, Gonzaga ever had the number one ranked team on this home floor if it wasn't them? No. Was USF and Gonzaga in the same league oh right time? Oh, my gosh. Okay. You just asked I'm talking about this question. side of the dinosaurs, Dan. <laughs> it, I, love how, I love how Greg will ask questions that we can't possibly <laughs> answer. <laughs> And then we try to give an educated <laughs> guess. Yeah. Well, that was it. Okay. Here's uh, the Alaska Airlines upcoming schedule. And then they for argue Gonzaga. Us like he knows. They get at Creighton, <laughs> and then they're <laughs> against Washington, and at Tennessee, at North Carolina. Actually, is Tennessee here? Or is that on the road? That's it's in Phoenix. Yeah, that's what I thought. Game. It was a neutral site game. So uh, that's going to be tough. A, I mean, it, that these next four games as tough as maybe they've ever had. Well, if somebody's got tickets to that. Game in Phoenix. You're in for a heck of a day of college basketball as Ayaye knocks down a little jumper because it's that game, and then Nevada plays that same afternoon, and Nevada's ranked in the top six, seven as well. We're number five right now. Five right now. <laughs> I 
can't believe you answered with those old USF teams. <laughs> I mean, Bill Russell, <laughs> I know, <Lisa> Jones. <laughs> Basketball That was story. barely this side of World War II. <laughs> 3.38 to play in Spokane, 94-53. Makes it very difficult to defend this team. They got weapons, and they're unselfish weapons, willing to pass up, like you said, a good shot yeah. for a great one. Look, mo most college teams would love to have a couple guys yeah. who can go off like that. Gonzaga with 34 buckets, 23 of them assisted on. And, gentlemen, this note just handed to me. Creighton currently ranked 29th in the country. So this is... Well, they've had a couple nice wins as of it, late. And this is going to be on their home floor. You go play the top 30 team, and it's not going to be easy. And I believe we have some blood on the floor right now, so. Yeah, the bell went. No, the <laughs> bell was going back to the locker room, but he's back. So. Yeah. And now they start chanting MVP. Shoot the ball, Beach. <laughs> It's a set play off the baseline out of bounds. Are you, you ready? Are you heckling go. Jack Beach? Here's Foster. Shot was blocked. Back come to Bison. I just know his dad well, and he'll have wanted me to share that I bit know. of information. I play. This uh, game coming up against Creighton looks like this. They're five and one. Defeated Clemson, ranked 16th at the time, NCAA tournament team. Wasn't Clemson a Sweet 16 team a year ago? I believe so. They, look, Creighton shoot, shoots the ball. And you got to know on their home floor with the number one team in the country, they're going to be uh, awfully comfortable as Petrusev knocks down another three. Well, that'll be interesting to see if Gonzaga gets through that next four game stretch where they will really be in that one voting members rank. Ayayi left wide open. Joel shot looks good coming off his hand, doesn't it? And a chance for three at the other end, 2.36 to play. Nice drive here by Hunter. Gets the foul and one. Hunter's done a nice job tonight, 11 points, four of nine from the field. He, he and Dang have really been the bright spots along with Shaid for the Bison. Uh, but the three-point shot, something the Bison have done well all year. It's just not been there tonight. They're now 18%, 5 of 27 from the three-point line. Hey. I think he heard me after I think you one. did. You ask and you shall receive. And that gets Gonzaga to the century mark. Off the glass. Tyree Eady, redshirt freshman out of Middleton, Wisconsin. Two minute mark. Bang. Kicked by Jack Beach. Possession remains with North Dakota State. Gonzaga now 26 of 37 field goals assisted. That's been a theme all year. Just unselfish, but you know they just 
Their offense is just set up with all the pick and rolls that they'll run as Hunter knocks down another layup. Weak side action. If you just move the ball, the ball's going to find the open shooter. Gonzaga's done that tonight and really throughout the season. Zach Norvell leading them with eight assists. Again, Petrosev missing this time. But he is the sixth Zag into double figure scoring. And that those eight assists ties Norvell's career high for assists. You just see when Norvell's is such a versatile player. I mean, he's average six rebounds a game in Maui. You know, it's not just the scoring as the IA gets the rebound and foul, but rather steps out of bounds. You know, for Norvell, if his shot's not falling, he's still making winning plays for GU. You know, defensively, he's underrated with his size. He can distribute the ball. Uh, and obviously, with his size, he can rebound. He Both he and Kispert are really good rebounders for perimeter players. So what's happening here? Dan, or you generally do the interview after the game. Have we sent Dan Dickow out to do this? Yeah, I think he's, yeah, I'm not sure if he's nervous about just the period of time he's got to wait between uh, the end of the game and an interview or if he's yeah. feeling envious. But he oh, yeah. gets to do the interview today. That's all right. I get more time with you. Hey, I'm great with that. Final 20 seconds now. Gonzaga 7 and 0 on this season and they're going to win it 102 to 60 ranked number one in the country and now the Creighton Blue Jays up next. And if you're Mark Few and his coaching staff you wish you go into these next five games fully loaded but it is what it is. It right? is what it is absolutely but I think you have to be thrilled I mean, despite the 42 point win you have to be thrilled with your team's approach. You know, my expectations is that we, we would have seen a bit of a Maui hangover, yes. as it were. Didn't really see any of that outside.